Right, here we are again then. In this video I'm going to show you how to find what most people call a smoke map. Because Winnells won't find this map on its own, I will also be showing you how you can find a map for yourself when Winnells doesn't find it. So you get two lots of information in one go here. I'm going to move along a fraction. Now I know where I'm looking which does help but I do know that the smoke map is a spiky map a lot like this so I've got a vague idea of what I'm looking for that doesn't make me a genius it just means that I've looked on lots of forums looked at various maps and information and found out that that's the sort of shape I'm looking for so obviously you can do the same thing now when I was stuck this thing up here saying that I've, I've got a map here which is 3 by 13 now I simply don't believe that so I'm going to right click on it and delete it. Now I'm going to say now what I believe. I believe that this information here is a map and I think it's the smoke map and I think that this spike here is one of the axes and I think this spike here is the other axis. Now I could be wrong but it doesn't matter because I will find out as I go through. Now, to get me started, I'm going to highlight that, so I'm just going to click and drag across, and then let go. Once I've got that, I'm going to go to text view, and have a look at exactly the same thing in text view. There we are. I'm going to make this a bit wider, because what I want to do is I want to look at this. Because if you look here, I've got a 2D graphical representation, and it's got these funny little rising bars, and there's several of them. So I'm going to take a guess that that's an important thing and so what I need to do is get all of them to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the W key which is the same as going up to view and using view less columns but I'm not going to use that one so I'm just going to press W and I'm going to press it and I'm going to press it and I'm going to press it and I'm going to keep my eye on this and see what happens. Now what I want this to do is to jump into some sort of recognisable pattern. And it has. Not much recognisable, but it's more recognisable than it was. Because if I go one more, it's all gone out of alignment and staggered. And if I press M and go back the way I was. So now I've got what looks like a recognisable pattern. The only thing is, is it doesn't look exactly like the first thing I was looking at. And the reason for that is where this origin is because I don't know if this is in the right place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control and I'm going to press one of the direction keys and watch what happens on the side and it's moving it doesn't matter which key I press I can go left or right it doesn't matter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going until everything either lines up or I've gone too far Oop, I've gone too far so I'm going to go back one I'm going to assume that I've now got everything on there all lined up nice and tidy. And again, when you're a beginner, you don't know whether you've got this right or wrong. So you just don't know. So you have to take your best guess. But I'm going to assume that I'm correct. And then I'm going to say to myself, well, what does this mean? Well, I'm going to guess and I'm going to say, right, let's say that's where it starts. So I'm going to go along and I'm going to say, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, 13. So I'm going to assume I've got 13 columns. And then I'm going to count down 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'm going to assume that I've got 16 rows. Now that assumption is not daft because if I'm right the axes data for this map will be there in front of me. I've just got to find it. And I've just decided it's 13 by 16 because I've picked 13 across and 16 down. If I'm right, I'll be able to find those numbers. So let's go and have a look. What have we got here? Oh, look, 16. And then followed by some numbers. And if I go through those numbers, 13 followed by some numbers. So maybe I'm right. And again, at this stage, it really doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. I'll find out as I keep going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that as a map. Now, I can do that by the shorthand method, or I can show you this. Here we are. Select map. 
So selection to map. I can press K or I can press this. Now for now I will just select this. So there we go. So I've got a map. Oh dear. Winnells doesn't know what the axes are. Look at that. It's just stuck numbers in there because it doesn't know what the numbers are. I'm just going to move that up a bit now so we can see those together. So it doesn't know what the numbers are. So I'm going to have to find the numbers and tell it what the numbers are. OK, now let's go for one set of numbers then. Let's go for 16. I mean, we think one of these is 16, and it obviously isn't that one, because that seems to end at 12. So we think this one might be 16. So what we'll do is we'll go to 16, and we'll pick the start address of the row, which seems to be there. Look, 4D, C, 2A. Now, I could write that down and make a note of it to manually enter, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the cursor there. And hopefully Winnells will remember where I've left it. Right, now I'm going to come over here and double click. What I've got here is a data source of 1, 2, 3, which we have. Look, down 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So I'm going to tell it that the data source is the EEPROM. In other words, the data source is the file. Now immediately I do that, this has all changed. It's not 1, 2, 3 anymore. But it hasn't got a starting address, so I'm going to tell it to go to where I left the cursor on the hex dump, and that should be 4DC2A. And if I've got that right, as if by magic, I will now have data for my axis. And if I look at that data, it looks recognisable, and I'm pretty sure if you've watched some of these videos, you will recognise it. That looks a lot like engine speed to me, which means that the unit, we won't worry about, we'll just call it revs per minute, we'll leave the factor the same and we won't touch precision because we don't need to. We'll just say, OK, we'll accept that. So just maybe, now don't worry if little bits like this appear regularly, just click and delete to get rid of them because it can get a bit confusing when you first start that you've clicked on something and it's highlighted something you didn't want to highlight. Right, now let's have a look. This one then is 13 and so let's take a guess that what we want is 13. Now, as I said in one of the earlier videos, you don't want the 13, you want the first number after the 13. That's where the information starts. Right, hopefully Winnells will remember I went there. I'm going to come back. I'm going to make a point of not clicking anywhere on here in case it gets all muddled up. So I'm just going to click deliberately down there. And then I'm going to go up and click on the axis that I want. Notice it's highlighted this bit, which I didn't want. But that doesn't matter. But you need to spot that because that sometimes causes you problems. Right, so here we go. Well, we don't know a description, but we'll tell it that the information is in the EEPROM again, that file. And we'll take a gamble, or not a gamble, because we'll assume that Winnells knows. So we'll say, from the hex dump cursor. And if we're right, numbers will appear up here. And if we're really right, the numbers appearing up there will make some sort of sense. OK, let's just say, well, shall we accept that? Yeah, we'll accept that then. So, OK, we've got it. So what we've got is a new map. So this is our new map, and we've got a chance to alter any bits and pieces on that map if we think it's the correct map. Now, we called this, or I called it, the smoke map. So there is a fair chance it's something to do with smoke, and if it's the smoke map, then what we're looking for is information about injected fuel quantity and the mass air flow, the amount of air that's flowing into the engine. Now, looking at these figures, remember back to other videos, about 1,000 is a suitable number for mass airflow. If we knock a naught off of the end of there, we will probably get 1,050. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that this one is mass air flow. I'm again going to assume it's milligrams per stroke. doesn't really matter whether I'm right or wrong at this stage, but I'm going to assume it's milligrams per stroke. And I'm going to assume that I need at least 0.1 on that 
to give me my 1050. Let's have a look. Yep, that gives me my 1050. I'm going to ignore the precision because I really don't care if there's any numbers after the decimal point on this one. So I'm going to say OK. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say to myself, right, well, what, what will this be? Well, this really must be fuel. And if it's fuel, it will be a, a number like 50. It certainly won't be in the hundreds. So I'm going to go to there and I'm going to guess that this is my smoke map. So I'm going to say the name of it is now smoke map. I'm going to guess that that is injection quantity. So I'll assume that that is milligrams per stroke. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in there 0 0.01, which will get me in the region of my two digit numbers. So that will get me my 50 or 45 or so. And then for precision, I'm going to go for two digits. And the reason I've gone for two digits is that if I look on here, occasionally there are two digits being used. That one is 24.55. So they've used two digits. So I'm going to use two digits on this one. So I'm going to say OK. And there we are. We've got a smoke map. We've got an air supply. We've got the revs per minute we can expect. And we've got the injected quantity. So we've got the whole thing. Now the only thing it left is, is just a personal preference. I prefer to call that map injection quantity limited by mass air flow. I'm going to leave smoke there as well, but that's my personal preference. I prefer to call it that, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to call it that. I'm going to click that to close it. And I'll end there.